Welcome to the Biopsychology Catch-Up series where we're looking at the structure and function of neurons. You remember in last session we took a look at the structure and function of motor neurons and this session is going to cover the structure and function of sensory and relay neurons. We're going to begin with a quick game and you can fill this into question eight, the answers there as I go through each of these. So all we're looking for is what the key term is related to the definition on the left. So first we've got to connect the neuron to other neurons or directly to organs and the possible terms are dendrites, axon and myelin sheath. So take a moment to think about what the answer is. So the answer for that one was axon terminal. OK, the second one, we've got receive signals from other neurons or from sensory receptor cells. So is that dendrites, axon, myelin sheath or axon terminal? Take a moment to think about it. And the answer for that one was dendrites. Number three is long slender fiber that carries nerve impulses. So we've got dendrites, axon, myelin sheath or axon terminal. Which one do you think it is? And the answer that hopefully you got right was axon. And on to the final one. So insulates the axon so that the electrical impulses travel faster along the axon. Is it dendrites, axon, myelin sheath or axon terminal? Take a moment to think about it. And the answer, which you probably guessed by process of elimination, is myelin sheath. OK, so just a quick reminder here in terms of the specification, there are the three types of neuron named on the specification. And I spoke briefly in last session about what this means in terms of potentially you could get a question on either of these. Now, remember, for each of the types of neuron, motor, relay and sensory neurons, you have to be aware of their structure and also their function. And last session, remember, we covered the structure and function of a motor neuron. So here we're going to take a look at structure and function of relay and sensory neurons. OK, so we're going to begin with the relay neuron. So again, remember, there are two main branches of the nervous system, the CNS, the central nervous system, and the PNS, the peripheral nervous system. In terms of where relay neurons are, they're located in the CNS, the central nervous system, specifically the brain and the spinal cord. Now, what relay neurons do in terms of functionally, what their role is, is they allow motor neurons and sensory neurons to communicate within one another. That's to say they pass signals between these two neurons. Interestingly, the majority of relay neurons don't need a myelin sheath that you would find in the structure of the sensory and motor neuron, as the signal doesn't need to travel far the only function is really to bridge the gap between the motor and the sensory neuron, so the impulse doesn't need to be sped up. Now, hopefully you were paying attention when I was talking through the information there in terms of the function of a relay neuron. We're going to have a little spot the mistake activity. This is going to be three minutes, so you don't need to stop your video. Just leave the video playing. So this is going to be question nine in your worksheet. I'd like you to copy out the information correcting the mistakes on relay neurons as you go along. So you're going to have three minutes beginning now.
Let's take a look then and see if you spotted those mistakes. So the mistakes are highlighted in red. So we've got relay neurons are located in the CNS. That's correct. And it says and control muscle movement in the PNS. That's not a correct statement. That's actually what a motor neuron does. Next one. One of the main functions of the relay neuron is to allow sensory and motor neurons to connect. So relay neurons don't allow them to connect, but they do allow them to communicate messages with one another. The final mistake is, as relay neurons don't need to pass messages over long distances, they have a myelin sheath. Remember, relay neurons don't need the myelin sheath because, of course, the impulse doesn't have to travel far, so it doesn't need to be sped up. Next, we're going to take a look at the sensory neuron in terms of its function, that's to say what it actually does. So sensory neurons are located in the PNS, the peripheral nervous system, and are activated by sensory inputs. So things like a sensation of touch, maybe seeing light, sounds, etc. And what sensory neurons do is they transmit this information from the peripheral nervous system in to the central nervous system. And remember in motor neurons, this was the other way around in the sense that from a motor neuron, it was going from the CNS into the PNS. For the sensory neuron, it's from the PNS into the CNS. So just a little bit of extra information about the sensory neurons. So most sensory neurons are what we call pseudo unipolar. And this means that the axon has two extensions with the cell body in the middle. One of these extensions connects to receptor cells where they gather the sensory input and the other transmits information into the spinal cord of the central nervous system. OK, so to cover the detail on sensory neurons in your worksheet, you're going to be having a go at question 10. Now, for question 10, your job is to fill in what's missing. So you can see there on the screen, there's a paragraph of text about sensory neurons with a number of stars. Your job is to copy that information, including what you think is the missing term for each of those stars. You're gonna have three minutes to do this. You don't need to pause the video, just allow it to run because it's got a timer.
let's take a look at what those missing terms were. So we've got sensory neurons send messages from the PNS, the peripheral nervous system, to the CNS. They are activated by sensory input. Most sensory neurons are pseudo unipolar. Well done if you got that term, which means that the something, the axon has two extensions with the cell body in the middle. And one of these extensions connects to the missing term was receptor cells, where they gather sensory input and the other transmits information into the spinal cord of the CNS. A final thing then we just need to take a look at is the structure of the relay and sensory neuron in terms of what they look like. Now, hopefully I've given you enough information that you can figure out from the diagram, this is in question 11 in your booklet, which is which. So next to the diagram, can you label which of those you think is a relay neuron and which you think is a sensory neuron? You might want to just pause the video while you figure it out. Here are the answers. So we've got the sensory neuron on the left hand side and the relay neuron on the right hand side there. So just check you've got those both labeled correctly. And the next job that I'm going to have you do is label in what the different parts of the sensory and relay neuron in terms of where they actually are. So for sensory neuron, I'd like you to label the axon, cell body, myelin sheath and receptor cell. And for the relay neuron, I'd like you to label the axon, cell body, dendrite and presynaptic terminal, which is also known as the axon terminal for that one. So you might want to pause the video here and just have a go at figuring out where you think those different parts of the structure of the relay and sensory neuron are before coming back and I'll talk through the answers. OK, so let's take a look at how you got on there. Now, hopefully you got on quite well because um, we've already gone through what they were in terms of functionally. So there's a few things that you might have been able to figure out, for example, where the receptor cell was located on a sensory neuron. And you probably figured out the difference between these two neurons when you saw that the relay neuron pictured here didn't have a myelin sheath, whereas the sensory neuron did. Now, it's sort of kind of worth noting in a relay neuron, you see here that the axon that we've got on this relay neuron is quite long. It may well be the case that the axon is relatively short on a relay neuron. So just take a moment there just to look at the different parts of the neuron and check that you've got them in the right place there on your diagram. Well done for completing this session on the structure and function of the sensory and relay neurons. So putting that all together now, we've done the structure and function of the sensory, motor and relay neurons. So join us in the next session where we'll be consolidating this information and doing a little bit of assessment practice.